Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over surgical site infections. So anytime we have a cut in the skin, we're at higher risk of infection because that our skin is what protects us. So when we have a surgical opening, so they make an incision in the skin, open it up, we are at risk of infection, okay? Um, and now this can be any time between day one to day 30 is where we normally see the signs start, okay? So it could be um, pus drainage, red, warm, painful. Um, it could start, the incision could start opening up a little bit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it does help my channel reach more people. So let's get started, guys. So what are the causes of a surgical site infection, okay? So one, we have germs on our skin already, okay? It's called normal flora. It doesn't harm us, but if it gets in, it can, okay? If the conditions are right, it can start flourishing and cause a infection, okay? So for one, germs that are already on your skin. For two, um, if they're working on an area of your body or an organ such as the bowels, it can contaminate, okay? It can contaminate the area. Um, so it just depends on what organ, if they're what they're working on in the body, okay? Um, germs can also come from, obviously, the environment. You have a surgeon working on you, okay? They, it is a sterile environment, um, but germs still do get in. Okay, you are more at risk for a surgical site infection if you have poorly controlled diabetes, problems with your immune system, um, if you're overweight, obese, if you're a smoker, um, if you take certain medications, corticosteroids, um, or if the surgery is longer than two hours, you are at higher risk. Okay, there are different levels of infection. So does it just involve the skin, this, the top layer of skin? This is a superficial. Um, is it deep? So does it go down to the muscles, you know, getting getting deeper in there? Um, or is it even deeper? So um, an organ or the, the space where they were working, is that whole area infected? Okay. Um, so those are the, the different levels of infection that we can have. Um, and they're all kind of treated a little bit different. So treatment, um, of course, there's different treatments that we can use. I mean, if it's superficial, normally we can just treat it topically with the antimicrobials. Uh, but most of the time we do need to use antibiotics. So um, the, the length of time that we're going to be on the antibiotics completely depends on how bad the infection is. Um, but you can guarantee you'll be on them for typically a week. Um, they may start you on IV antibiotics. Um, and then change to pills later, just once again, depends on how bad the infection is. Um, and sometimes there's even um, infections that are resistant to commonly used antibiotics. So sometimes they'll take a swab and see which um, antibiotics we should be using. Um, that is best practice. It should be done um, because we we need to know what what we're what we're dealing with how to treat you if we're not taking that swab um like it, it it's it is best practice um to have a swab so we we know what we're treating okay because the problem if we don't is if we're using um something that's not really working then, then the, the infection is just getting worse and worse and worse for that week. And then you go see the doctor and it's like, okay, I finished my antibiotics. It's still not better. Okay. Um, so that's why it is best practice. Now there is surgical treatment. Um, sometimes they do need to do. Um, so they'll open up either all of the wound or part of the wound. Um, they will test the pus or tissue. They could debride it, removing any dead tissue, infection. They'll rinse the wound out with salt water so it's saline, um, drain the pocket of pus, abscess, 
Um, and then they'll, if needed, they'll pack the wound um, with saline soaked gauze, okay? And then just cover it with a bandage. So obviously wound care is going to be needed. Um, how extent it is, whether there's packing and whatnot, um, you will need to know how to do this. So a lot of times um, they'll start out with a, a nurse is doing this, she will teach you, but it is expected that you learn or a family member learns how to perform the wound care. Okay, so you'll have to remove old bandages and packing um, now you never want to pull out packing that is stuck or a bandage that is stuck because you're destroying all the new fresh uh, tissue growth, right? So um, either you can saturate it with saline, just saturate it um, within five minutes, it'll just release, um, or you can just shower with it and it will allow the bandage to come off more easily. Um, you just, as long as it's potable water, I like to say that because uh, I, I mean, where I'm at, you can you can shower with it on. Um, but if it's not potable water, drinking water, um, you should you should not be really showering um, and getting that wound wet with that water because it can introduce more bacteria. Um, so clean the wound and put on a new dressing, um, packing material, all that. Okay, um, they the nurse um, they should teach you how to do this. Some wounds do need help of a vac, so a vacuum-assisted closure. Um, this does increase blood flow to the area and it helps healing. So it is negative pressure vacuum dressing, okay? Um, they put in some little foam pieces into the wound, um, put the vacuum on it, and it really pulls, like it sucks at the wound, okay? Um, it's normally changed every two to three days. Um, it is done by a healthcare professional. It will not be done by you. Um, there is complications with that and it does have to be put on very specific. Um, and then there, there's problems that can go on with the vac um, for the closure. So it's not something that we teach. Uh, that, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, now, if the wound does not close by itself, um, sometimes a skin graft or muscle flap is needed, okay? So the outlook for surgical site infections, um, if they're not very deep um, and the opening's small, most of the time you can just take care of it at, at, like by yourself at home. Um, now for the deeper, larger open wounds, um, you may need to spend a few days in the hospital. Um, and then after that, You'll either go home with a uh, follow-up for your surgeon. They may send nurses into the home to help you for the first few times, um, get you kind of settled, make it make sure that you know how to change that dressing appropriately. Um, if that's not something that you can do or a family member, uh, if you don't have family in the area, they may send you to a nursing facility um, where you can heal and get better um, with all the help that you need. So when to contact your medical professional. So if you have any signs of infection, plus drainage, bad smell coming from the wound, fever, chills, hot to touch, redness, pain, um, or it's even sore to touch, you want to get in contact with your medical professional. Now, most of the times, early warning signs are there, okay? If, if it's starting to open up, if it looks different, if it's not progressing, and getting better and it looks like it's like okay this wound looks like it's it's getting worse but you're kind of sitting there unsure most of the time that it's a sign of infection and within a couple of days you're going to have the following um symptoms right so just keep a close eye on it and it, you should be looking at it every day unless the doctor has said okay leave that bandage on for seven days um because i have seen this many times um if that's the case if, if you're noticing like a, a wound feels tighter or warmer, it just is, it, it's kind of going backwards. You need to contact your healthcare professional, okay? So I hope this video did give you a lot of answers for a surgical site infection, or if you think you have a surgical site, uh, site infection and you're unsure of what to do. Um, but that's all I have for this video, guys. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.